Cocktails, episode 76, I Can't Decida, and the Gummy Worm Army. I Can't Decida was such a sweet tot. She almost always did what she ought. Her heart was tender and kind. With goodness, she was always aligned. But when it came time to decide, her time she would bide and bide. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a compassionate goop girl called I Can't Decida. She was known throughout Goop World for her kindness and thoughtfulness. I Can't Decida was always the first to help out when another Goop was in need. Once, Chryso cried for three days in a row over a lost sailboat, and he made himself sick. So sick that he couldn't speak anymore through his tears and he wouldn't eat a thing. I Can't Decida baked him his favorite snickerdoodle cookies and walked through a snowstorm to deliver them. When she got to his house, she made him a cup of cocoa and served it along with the snickerdoodles. Then she said, Cheer up, Chryso. That sailboat will either find its way back to you or it will sail into the hands of a happy new owner that will love it, just like you did. I do hope you will cheer up and share the treats I brought. It would be so much more fun. Chryso finally stopped crying. I can't decide I watched with a smile on her face as the last tear dropped from his cheek. Then they both sat down and enjoyed the cookies and cocoa. I Can't Decida almost never lacked for company due to her good nature. There were times, however, when I Can't Decida would cause distress amongst the other goops. As much as she was known for her kindness, she was also known for her indecision. I Can't Decida had an extremely difficult time making decisions over just about anything. She could take hours deciding what to wear in the morning. I think I will wear my pink parka in the snow today. Hmm, maybe I should wear my green woolly sweater with my yellow slicker over it. Well, I really do like pink, so maybe I will wear the parka after all. She would deliberate over and over until her mother came into her room and chose for her. None of the other goops wanted to be behind her in line at the ice cream shop because she took way too long. Hmm. I think I will have a chocolate chip cone with rainbow sprinkles. Oh, wait, maybe I want to have strawberry with rainbow sprinkles. Or I could do the reverse and get birthday cake ice cream with chocolate sprinkles. I can't decide would go on and on while the rest of the goops grew very impatient, waiting for their turn. Due to her indecisive nature, I Can't Decida carried around a little red dice that she would roll to assist her in important decisions. When she couldn't decide if she should get Wainita a stuffed hippo or a stuffed camel for a birthday present, she said to herself, If I roll a three she gets a camel, and anything else, she will get a hippo. Rolling the dice saved quite a bit of time in the life of I Can't Decida. One blustery fall day, I Can't Decida emptied out her piggy bank and gathered all her coins. I think I have enough for some fabulous treats. Who shall I share them with? She said out loud. 
Oh, I know who. Yakadoo. I can't decide a made a rare, instant decision to share with Yakadoo because she knew he was extremely picky about what treats he liked and didn't like. In fact, he even kept a running list of his favorite foods. He would be able to help her make a decision quickly. I can't decide a set off for Yakadoo's house and told him that she wanted to treat him to a treat. That sounds stupendous. As long as it is a treat that I like, he said. So the two of them set out down a leaf-covered path with the wind blowing. They smashed crunchy autumn leaves along the way and talked about what treats they would get. I'm thinking I would get a bag of red cherry sour balls. But I'm, I'm not sure, said I can't decide. Oh, let me check my list, said Yakadu pulling out a pad of post-it notes from his pocket. He flipped through it and then said, Uh, yuck! Red cherry sour balls are on my yuck list, said Yuckadoo. Oh, then maybe I won't get those. I guess I will have to decide when we get to the candy shop. The candy shop was quite tiny, but it was very orderly and beautifully set up. The walls were lined with shelves of glass jars. Each jar was filled with enticing treats that beckoned the sweet tooths. There were rows of rainbow-colored jelly beans, sours, chocolate drops, lemon drops, sugar-covered gumdrops, cinnamon bears, Swedish fish, swirled gumballs, and so much more. Oh, yuckadoo! This place always makes my head spin. I can never decide what to get, exclaimed I Can't Decida in delight as she looked around. I can help you with that. Just tell me what you want, and I will tell you if it is on my yuck list or not, said yuckadoo. Excellent idea, exclaimed I Can't Decida. I would love to get some lemon drops, said I Can't Decida. Yuckadoo flipped through his notes. Not on my yuck list. You should get them. Hmm, but maybe I should get some strawberry chews instead, said I Can't Decida. Yuckadoo flipped through his notes again. Not on my yuck list. You should get them. Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe I should get some spice drops, said I Can't Decida. Once again, they weren't on Yuckadoo's list, but still, no decision was made. I Can't Decida deliberated her choices for over an hour. Yuckadoo had fallen asleep on the floor of the candy shop because he was so tired of listening to her. I Can't Decida was standing near a large barrel of gummy worms. The worms had listened to her for over an hour, and they could barely stand it anymore. One of them slithered over to the edge of the barrel and coiled himself around I Can't Decide At. Then he pulled her straight into the nest of gummy worms, and she disappeared. Chapter 2. I Can't Decide a Struggled. She tried to move her arms, but they wouldn't budge. The worm was squeezing her too tightly. She looked down and saw his fat, gummy body. And without thinking, she reached out and took a bite. The worm instantly released her and slid away. I can't decide could feel the rest of the worms sliding over her with their scratchy, sugar-sprinkled backs. She climbed through them as fast as she could and up and over the edge of the barrel, landing on the floor. That was gross, Yuckadoo, 
she said as she looked around for her friend. Instead, her eyes bulged as she beheld the scene before her. I can't decide had landed in what looked like the largest candy store she had ever seen. This must be candy heaven, she exclaimed. It didn't even look like a store. It was so large, it was more like a city. There was no end in sight to the sprawling rows of candy. There was a lollipop sky above her with enormous lollipops of every color of the rainbow hanging from the ceiling. Rows upon rows of clear glass candy jars filled with candy bananas, fish, apples, oranges, raindrops, bears, and so much more were everywhere. Walls were constructed of large clear tubes that held miles of jelly beans in every color imaginable. There was a glass case that twisted through the shop like a giant river, and it was filled with chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate, peppermint chocolate, chocolate bark, dark chocolate, chocolate cherries, chocolate pretzels, and many other chocolate-covered concoctions. I Can't Decida held her head and said, This place, this place, what is this place? I can barely stand it. Candylicious, said a cheery voice. I Can't Decida whipped her head around to see a red cinnamon bear sitting on top of a pile of candy peaches somewhere he clearly didn't belong. Candylicious! Mmm! I just can't decide where to start, said I can't decide The bear's tone changed from cheery to suspect when he said, What do you mean? I mean, I want to eat some candy, said I can't decide But I just can't decide where to start. Mmm! said the bear as he looked her up and down. You need to think before you try eating anything in Candylicious. Okay, I can do that, said I Can't Decida, knowing that she always thought about her decisions, perhaps a little too much. The bear instantly let down his guard and opened up to I Can't Decida. He told her that Candylicious was the largest candy store in Dubai, and it was a candy lover's dream. But the candy in Candylicious fell into different categories. It was very important to understand the categories. The cinnamon bear called himself Karfa, and he fell into the category of do not Eat, of course. There are two categories. Eat and do not eat, he explained. What would happen if I tried to eat you? Asked I Can't Decida. Karfa's eyebrows moved up in despair. He didn't like hearing this kind of talk. Oh, don't worry. I would never try and eat you. I was just wondering what would happen is all said I Can't Decida. There are a lot of other cinnamon bears in this shop. They won't like it. They have my back. The strawberry chews won't mind, and neither will the lemon drops. Why don't you eat one of them? I Can't Decida nodded and popped a strawberry chew into her mouth. Yum! What else should I try? Maybe a peach patty? Or one of these candied bananas? Hmm, so many choices, sighed I Can't Decida. Karfa sat and watched her for an hour before he was exhausted by her indecision. Hmm, decisions, decisions, said I Can't Decida 
as she mindlessly reached her hand into a barrel of rainbow-colored gummy worms, picked one up, and bit off the head. Karfa suddenly sprung up from his tired trance. No! He called out, but it was too late. Run! He said to I Can't Decida, who turned around to see a small army of gummy worms slithering out of the barrel and coming for her. Run! Run now! Follow me! Yelled Karfa. I can't decide. Picked up a lemon drop and threw it at the fast approaching worms, and then she ran after Karfa as fast as she could. Chapter three. I can't decide. Followed Karfa as he wound in and around containers of Swedish fish chocolate-covered mints, Smarties, peach-shaped gummies, and finally straight towards a wall lined with long, clear tubes of jelly beans. Rows and rows of jelly beans were displayed in every color of the rainbow, and then some. They ran by the tubes of sour apple, sour cherry, sour lemon, and sour orange. I can't decide it slowed down for a split second to look behind her and see the worms hot on her trail. They were being led by a giant gummy worm with a red head and green body and a fierce look on his face. Don't look back, chided Karfa. As they approached a row of jelly bean tubes, in different shades of red, Karfa slowed down. We need to hop in one of these now and hide. You have a red dress on, and I am red, so we will be camouflaged. I can't decide. Uh, looked up at all the shades of red. There was strawberry jam, which was a deep red, followed by pomegranate, which was a bit brighter. Then there was the classic blue-red of very cherry. And right next to that was sizzling cinnamon, which wasn't quite as bright as the very cherry. Come on, pick one now, said Karfa, as he looked in the direction of the worm army. Mm. Well, I think my dress is more the color of the strawberry jam jelly beans, but you are a little bit more the color of sizzling cinnamon. I'm just not sure which two we should pick. Just pick one! There's no time to waste, hissed Karfa. Then, because there wasn't a moment to lose, he shoved I Can't Decide deep inside the tube of very cherry jelly beans and followed right behind her. They wriggled in deep as the jelly beans spilled over them. Both of them disappeared just as the red-headed worm and his army turned the corner. The worm suddenly stopped as he realized he had lost sight of his prey. He stuck his body high up in the air, balancing on the end of his tail, and spun his head around 360 degrees in search of I Can't Decida and Karfa. Slowly and deliberately, he turned to the worm army behind him and began to motion. He sent worms off in every direction of the shop. Some went slithering away towards the chocolates. A few others began to climb the wall toward the lollipop ceiling. A few more slid towards the barrels of saltwater taffy. The remaining worms were ordered to start at the beginning of the jelly bean tubes and slide over each tube looking for suspicious activity. And so began 
the worm hunt for Icant Decida and Carfa. Meanwhile, Carfa watched it all from a crack between the very cherry jelly beans. He whispered to Icant Decida, We have to be very careful. Any sudden movement and the worms would notice. Okay, whispered back Icant Decida. Carfa continued to keep watch as I Can't Decida sat still in the jelly beans. Carfa was looking for a break, a moment where the worms went in another direction so that he and I Can't Decida could escape. But all he saw were worms patrolling Candylicious. They were sliding up and over every tube looking for movement. I can't decide a sat and waited patiently for a very long time. Still, it wasn't safe to go out. After what seemed like hours, I can't decide a grew hungry. She glanced at Carfa, who was still keeping a vigilant watch on the patrolling worms. And then she looked at the very cherry jelly beans that were surrounding her. One couldn't hurt, she thought to herself. So I can't decide, opened her mouth and took a tiny bite out of the nearest jelly bean. It was delicious. She had never had a very cherry jelly bean before. She made a mental note that she must tell Yuckadoo how delicious they were. Then she took another bite. It was equally delicious. Finally, I Can't Decida reached up and grabbed an entire jelly bean. And as she did, the jelly beans above it all slid down ever so slightly. Carfa glanced at her in panic. She had just exposed his face as the jelly bean hiding him slid away. At that exact moment, one of the worms squirmed over the two and found itself face to face with Carfa and I can't decide her. Chapter Four. I can't decide. A stared through the clear acrylic tube, straight into the eyes of an enraged gummy worm. It unpeeled itself from the tube, and stood up on its tail, and then shook, violently sprinkling sugar grains off its body. The worm quickly started moving his head in wild circles, summoning the rest of the gummy worm army. Carfa and I Can't Decida observed from inside the safety of the jelly bean too. We can't stay here for long, said Carfa, as he watched one of the worms slither down to the jelly bean exit and start to enter the tube. Come quick he said as he pulled I Can't Decida deeper inside the jelly beans so they couldn't be seen. We need to climb now to the top and get out. They are starting to enter from the bottom of the tube. I don't think they will suspect us of going to the top. So I Can't Decida and Carfa began their ascent to the top of the jelly bean tube. Meanwhile, Three of the worms had managed to wriggle their way inside the tube and were making their way upwards. Keep moving, keep moving, said Carfa as he climbed over jelly bean after jelly bean. I can't decide, scrambled over the beans as quickly as her little legs would take her. Her feet slipped off the jelly beans time after time and her hands lost their grasp. 
on the smooth, shiny surface of the beans. But she didn't give up. When they stopped to rest for a moment, they could hear the slithering of the worms plowing through the jelly beans beneath them, making their way upwards. After listening to the worms for just a few seconds, they both looked at each other with fear and moved upwards once again. Finally, they reached the top of the container and Karfa poked his head up. I can't decide a was right behind him. Karfa began to climb out of the container when suddenly a gummy worm popped up from the side and opened its mouth wide as if to swallow him. Karfa froze in terror. For the first time in her life, I can't decide a didn't hesitate to make a decision. She pulled out one of the very cherry jelly beans and shoved it in the worm's mouth. The worm had no teeth, so the jelly bean just stuck in his mouth. There was nothing he could do. I can't decide a was thrilled with her decision, and she proceeded to throw two more jelly beans into his mouth for good measure. He couldn't eat them now. He could barely move. Thank you, said Karfa, as he turned to look at I Can't Decida and saw three more worms coming at her from behind. Jump with me, he said, as he grabbed I Can't Decida's hand and leapt from the top of the jelly bean container straight onto a lollipop hanging from the ceiling. He managed to just catch it. Those worms can't come for us now. They can't jump, he laughed. <laughs> I can't decide a grabbed onto the lollipop with all her might. She looked down below and marveled at the enormity of Candy Licious. It was unreal. She had never seen anything like it, but as she stared at the colorful barrels, tubes, and jars of candy, all she could think about was home. I want to go home, Karfa. There is no candy that is better than home. Karfa smiled. The star pops make a wish on one, he said, as he pointed towards a cluster of star pops hanging from the ceiling. I can't decide a began climbing over the lollipops to make her way to a star pop when she looked at the worms wildly wriggling below. But I can't leave you, Karfa. The worms, won't they come after you? Don't worry about me. I'm going to drop into an army of bears, he said, as he pointed to a barrel of cinnamon bears below. Watch, said Karfa, and he let go of the lollipop and dropped downwards into the barrel of cinnamon bears. Once he arrived, the rest of the bears gave a small hurrah and waved up at I Can't Decida. It's my turn, she thought to herself as she made her way over to a star pop and grabbed hold of it. Then she closed her eyes and made a wish to be back in Goop World. The star pop began to twirl faster and faster. Round and round it went until it spun out the door of Candylicious and up into the sky where it sailed across the clouds above and landed in front of the sweet shop in Goop World with I Can't Decida firmly attached. I Can't Decida felt dizzy. She opened her eyes and looked down to see her hand grasping a tiny star pop. Did it really happen? She asked herself. Then she remembered Karfa and smiled. I must tell Yakadu all about my adventure. Then I can't decide a set off to find Yakadu, but he was nowhere to be found. He was at the Dead Sea with far too much salt in his mouth. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. 
If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.